My entire life has been a lie. A lie? I picked up the UFO fleet in the tent That's on the rough, radar, buddy. sir. They're on the sea south of here. If you travel at full speed, we can reach them in an hour. All right, so it's for the team, sorry. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, Let's make the radar, yeah. sir. What is it? The radar just detected an enormous object. It appeared straight above the fleet. Oh, don't it tell now. me stones there already. No, it is much bigger than that. I estimate it's at least 2,000 shawls. Big. That's gigantic. What in the heavens is happening? Can my life get even more messed well, up now? Well, let's go see it. How could this happen to me? <laughs> With Avinu's music to boot. Uh. I'm actually surprised that like, well, you couldn't, they didn't put in that song. Uh, Copyright. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm also trying to avoid action. Well, I could have put something like, say, a shitty flute cover. Oh, remember, you, well, remember, you can at the very least put in seven seconds with, before, without uh, the... Pedro, after I got basically fucked over with a resting sleep and being a legend of mana, I'm trying to, you know, take the list less risk possible. Well, oh, shit. Uh, divine justice from above, uh, just like Kafka. And shoot! That means everyone on the Thames is probably gonna die. Well, or at least very in danger. It's still a very sturdy ship, so it will survive for the time being. But uh, oh, look There's at that! It's the ship of it. it. No, actually, this is the ship of the executioner. If you remember, this is the 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 masked woman who helped, uh, um, you know, Kaiser Sigmund at the beginning of the uh, of the um, oof, the Northern Arc. Oh boy, wonder, but uh, let's cut instead back uh, to the to the multi personalities with no name, so you know what that means. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Go ahead, Dweebs. All that was needed was to fulfill the duty. Now I sense a fault to greed. A selfish creed. A request to his face. Jova? We have no need for an organization of fanatics. Go ahead, Dweebs. I'm excluding Pedro for a reason. You will see what they will. It's their nature. But to what she's undo, something must be done. A reprimand is necessary. They are so, an expendable group. There is nothing we can do at this point. Yes, there is nothing more to gain from their continued existence. They have Sorry? Currently, we're in the process of dealing with each error's possible. Stride is in charge of dealing with Aquanai. Lips? Uh, right. Oh, sorry. Did we just take care of that? Moreover, Krellian is rather exorbitant. It's only a molecular machine. Why is he placing so much importance on it? Oh, who is this Krellian yeah, fellow? The machines is all the same to us. Uh -huh. Machines! Machines! Oh, okay. <laughs> It's all the same. Well, at least he's not racist. So, no, it, it's Solaris. They will be. They, they, they oh, are. Oh, yeah, practically. True. yeah, I was going to say, considering everything we learned in the last part, I, I got news for no you. No worries here. We're still not done on that front. But uh, let's go meet. Uh, um, well, okay. No, these are these are just, you know, members of crew, crew members of the ship. But let's go meet uh, our last major introduced villain. Finally, we're kind of kind of stopping, you know, we introduce him. But uh, are we this, sure is, this is the last this one. Is, yes, but it's not the least. Krelian, the chief scientist of Solaris. Go ahead, Pedro. Lambs 03, 05 are all damaged. Just retrieve the non damaged ones. The non damaged ones. Krelian is uh, quite something. Eliminate the rest of the trash. Use the test subjects, wells for retrieval and elimination. He looks like a recolor of Sigurd, minus. We've the confirmed eyes. the marker location of Stein. Of the 130 research and excavation sites, it's in the southernmost peak. Why is it there, though? Short group is entering the void now. <laughs> I see. The thing they've searched for over 500 years. This should be interesting. <laughs> so let them find it, then kill them. Releasing, Releasing the wells. The wells. Releasing Orson Wells. Oh no! <laughs> it's oh no, Unicron! Unicron. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, see what the same this? group. Yeah. Did you see that huge full fishbowl thing? <laughs> Weren't the other salvager fleets almost blown away by one shot? Is this the way the ethos greets us? Um, I'm not gonna swear you, buddy. I seriously doubt that. <laughs> Why do they have to attack us? We only came to help with excavations. C Captain Will's Reapers! Reapers are coming out of a fishbowl thing in the yeah, buzzers! My, my PNG is jumping in the air! What? Why? It can't be happening. <sighs> Launch the gears. Load the big gun. Captain? Hmm. Alright, Troll. We're going to assist and rescue any of the survivors from the other ships. All possible while trying to retreat and shoot down those wells with our two guns. Don't let those filthy wells get near our tens. Hans, look alive. Take the helm. We'll show that fishbowl thing how real men of a sea retreat. All oh, right. Noble. Take the helm. There we it. Dive, right. dive, well, dive, dive, be dive. Enough, so. But still, again, shows great competency actually on the part of the captain. <laughs> you know, Jova, you, you said you said dive, dive, dive. That reminds me of that bit. Oh, of that great! Now it's Death Stranding. <laughs> it reminds me a bit of that Captain Scarlet episode where uh, one of the guys on the submarine gets caught in the uh, chain and he drowns while the submarine's going down. Meanwhile, panic is going on board. Yeah. <laughs> because you know the whales to? are invading. Uh. You're running back and forth, though. That's not very productive. I detected a rescue signal. It seems the Thames is being attacked by a pack of Reapers. Huh. So this is the purging by Solaris that Stone was talking about. Oh my god, Teo, it's the purge. I know, I was about to. <laughs> let us make let us make haste. Otherwise the Thames will be destroyed by Reapers. So I know what you're thinking. Oh, so basically this is gonna be kind of like of a sort of an escort mission where you have to reach the Thames and, you know, help and repel the Reapers with a set of, you know, scripted battles potentially at the very least. Um not really. Yeah, I was surprised kinda too. You just need to reach the Thames and then the rest of the, the event will basically play out. I do wonder if it was one of the things that was streamed, uh, you know, during development uh, where they had planned a set of battles. And meanwhile, Faye is still asleep during all this. Unfortunately, yes. It's gonna be a bit still, uh, still a bit before he recovers. Uh, he, he, if anything, he sleeps for most of Act 3, actually. And we're close to the end of it, actually, now. Huh. Interesting. Again, it feels a bit like an inverse of Seven, though to be fair, Seven was mainly cloud story, so it, so it kind of made sense that the pace more or less came to a bit of a halt. Oh, mind you, stuff was still going on, but you know, there was still arguably a bit of even focus between you know what was going on mm -hmm. outside the area and what was going on All in right. the cloud. And oh, so, I, so I guess I'm leading the party now. Yeah. Oh, Sheetan, you came good. Yes, you could say that. But you seem to be better off than I expected. Of course! We are of course. men of the sea! Please stop. <laughs> is what I'd like to say. But oh. The, is, the situation's been pretty bad. We've got some that are injured badly, and some that are fatal. Yes, we're that serious now. But considering what happened to the other ships, what are in no position to do otherwise. And by the way, Cheaton, what the hell is up with that fishbowl thing? It came out of nowhere and kicked our butts and left behind wells. And then it headed for some obscure excavation site where there's supposed to be nothing. Odd, since we were sent to go to a more deeper and bigger excavation site. Just as I thought. Some say they saw a huge gear-like monster. It seems like it was guiding that fishbowl thing to the excavation site. Or so I'm told. Mm -hmm. So, it appears there is something there for sure. Hey, what's there, there? Call it Salvager's intuition, but I don't want to get any closer. And Sheeton, is that fishbowl an enemy of yours? You 
could say that. Well. Yeah, it's a yes or no question, treat them. Yeah, well, come okay, on. Okay, 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 to be fair, that does technically mean a yes. So. <laughs> I, even for a kid like this, she just tries to be as vague and prosaic as Decent. possible. Honestly, it's not fair to know. It's not fair to that island, but why? There's nothing there but a small mark. I, I gotta say, these guys would be amazing at the yes no game. Honestly, you see? at this point, I wonder if Cheetan's just got a gimmick that he is that dedicated to sticking to. And now I'm imagining drunken Cheetan, Sigurd, and Jesse trying to play even... 20 question right. while being drunk as shit. Don't and you yet, better. and yet, and yet somehow, even while drunk, Cheetan still manages to be vague and not spill the beans. In fact, he answers all questions yeah. with a question. Don't you, <laughs> don't, don't you see, Bart and Ellie, being mysterious, vague, and suspicious is part of my charm. What is it's your annoying. name? Yeah, it would be, pretty, it'd be, it'd be a pretty simple conversation. What's your name? <laughs> well, you see, well, you see, I have many well, see, names. The, 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 the designated word that my parents gave me happens to be a very interesting uh, conjunction of letters. Just tell me a goddamn name! Honestly, 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 if I was answer would be, well, I have many names. So, I'm not sure which one you want me to yeah. reveal to you. I am, I am known to, to my wife, I am known as Honey Babe. To others, I am known as the Doctor. Doctor? Doctor Who? Why, exactly. yes! Yes, exactly, indeed. Doctor. Exactly, Doctor Who. <laughs> honestly, honestly, Chitan would not Chita, be out Chita, of... yes, Chitan yeah. is gonna be the new Doctor Who. Yeah, it, 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 it fits with uh, the Eleven Era appearance and... and uh, well, okay, it doesn't really apply to Chitan, but the trademark of, of Eleven, you know, Matt Smith, was two things. One, that it was vague as shit a lot of times, because it was not helped by how the story is, um, thanks to... I forgot his name already, but... Stephen uh, Moffat? No, Stephen Moffat, we're told in such a schizophrenic order. Um, the, um, it was as big as possible, but then there was the tagline of Eleven. It's not applicable to Cheetah, I can tell you already that it's not as simple. Um, but it was the doctor always lies, yeah. Mm. But yeah, for the time, for the time, the the the, the, um, the nurse will actually still attend to Faye, or so our capacity still no, 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 no. Honestly, honestly, wait, hold on. I think she said that she was tending to the Shevat agent, actually. That too, but, you know, oh, the primary is still there. Sorry. Primary is still on the... Hey, don't jump on the child. Come on. <laughs> actually, Cheetah did it. Um, the primary stands there to basically give you a reminder via a piece of paper uh, what Billy's gun control are supposed to be in battle. No, so there is that. Uh, oh, no, it's you. Was that Benny? No, no, it's, it's Pedro. I knew something was up with the ethos. It's not permissible to use religion for wrongdoing. Change party members? Well, you know, I, you know what, I I'm, guess... I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely indignant about the fact that this terrible use of religion. By the way, you want to change party members? <laughs> uh, you know, I guess to give the game credit, at least we still have Margie and her sex, so I guess not all religion We will actually, okay, game. it's, it's not as, it's not identical for obvious reasons to the, um, to the ethos, obviously, but we will also learn the origin of the, of the Nissan sect origin, you know. Oh, don't tell me um, they're also going to reveal that they were secretly an evil band. Again, it's too. not as simple as repeating that, but for the time being, let's head to this excavation site. Chitan, what is Solaris trying to do? And we just have an entire part to explain, whatever. It's for the, main the main Solaris army, why all of this? Well, let us get down. To business, so. You didn't really. Uh, now that is actually avoiding the question. Like you literally said nothing. <laughs> Cheetah is mostly just observing the situation, gathering data for himself, and not sh and sharing only breadcrumbs when the party is actually asking. <laughs> How can someone be so helpful yet so oh, unhelpful at the same time? What? what okay. Oh shit! Uh, hello. Ser seriously, do I always have to explain everything for you? It seems that you're the one who knows shit the most, so yeah. yes. But... <laughs> oh no, we have to deal with the, the employees guard, uh, of the remember, squid game? The, the, yeah, the, the party squad. Um, these are the, the troops that were present on the fishbowl, you know, 
um, she put the one that was part of the executioner. It's weirdly enough, but the executioner is nowhere to be was nowhere to be found, or at least uh, was not shot alongside Prelia. Mm. Don't worry, we will, we will see her again soon enough. But... For the time being, the enemy, aside from these, um, you will have to soon face local enemies, uh, which are specializing in giving you debuffs. Uh, so you need to always be ready to to potentially have uh, like stuff like poison or confusion, and deciding potentially to run away from fights. Uh, some enemies are a bit good, are relatively good for grinding, uh, you know, experience. Uh, but it's best if you just lay off from what uh, the the uh, normal, you know, the. Uh, overworld map has to offer. And yes, you kind of need to grind for this dungeon, I, let me just say that. Difficulty um, spike? For, mostly for a boss fight. For the time being, well, let's get back to, instead... Uh, okay, Graf, what are you doing at the bottom of the ocean? He's posing there, menacingly in his mech. And he's being contacted by Miang. His gear is reawakening. Soon, uh, he himself will awaken also. What do you mean as well, I'm, Richard? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, because of my nerves, I'm changing my voice. His friends are heading for the... the that William, yes. Sir. It's been sealed for up to 4,000 years. Where did the audio go from the game? Shut up. It's atmosphere drives. It doesn't necessarily have to be music all the time. Yeah, there is sound, but it's very minimal. Mm -hmm. He probably won't give anyone anything, but it's something we both need. You know what I mean? The thing of which we discussed and is very secretive to the audience. So, please. Oh, she actually asked please. Huh. Well, he's, somebody I knows how to say please in this. Only because you said there. please. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's a villain. Oh my god, does that mean that, uh, you know, Solaris are the people actually using iPads? You know what, that, you, just, you know what, I just brought up a good point. You really want me to explain things, but you have to right. please. Uh, originally, you... originally, I was actually tempted to use uh, the beginning speech from, one of the beginning speech from Bioshock, because it kind of fits. Uh, um, oh so let me ask, uh, is a man entitled of the sweat of his forehead? No, says the man in Solaris, it belongs to the ministry. No, says the man in Ave, it belongs to the king. No, says the man in Kislev, it belongs to the, to the Kaiser. I choose something different. I choose Zeboim. Oh, okay. so we're getting oh, both. So that, we're getting both. Battle, so it's we're time getting... for a battle on the big bridge. Maybe. So we're getting both Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. We're getting a city below and a but, city above. But uh, if you bring Ellie here, she seems to be recognizing the place somehow. Hmm. I know. I know it well. Yes. The cavern city, Zeboin. For reference, Zeboin is another Hebrew term. I forgot exactly what it means. I'll check in the meantime. When we were buried in that vast... No. Mausoleum. Mausoleum. Ellie! Ellie! What is wrong? No <laughs> need to shout! Oh, I am gentlemen. right here! Richard, uh, <laughs> Richard you know I'm pretty sure the phrase was a bit longer than that. Huh? <laughs> what? It, it was did, just for that. Did, did I just... No. Hurry on ahead. Never mind the fact that I just <laughs> yelled Richard, at you! What happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess Richard was playing by the system shock around this time. He, he yeah. ran out of coffee. He, he's not doing <laughs> dear, well. Uh, just hurry on ahead. That don't should see. be fun. Don't you see? Uh, guys, 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 don't, don't you see? That's, that, that's what I said before. Um, as we go well, as we go through the game, Richard's mental state gets it's worse and worse. Yeah. And uh, so. it's, it's interesting as well because I've been play, I played a bit of both the No Cooney games uh, recently, and it's amazing how far his translations and localization skills have come since. Well, well, we pretty much have established that, yeah, yeah. He, 
Well, yeah, well. To be fair, good. Gribs. To be fair, Gribs. The lead translators are a group of Welsh people, like Holly Chance. Uh, Richard is the localization director. He's directing the team. He's not actually translating He's more things himself. He's a coordinator, yeah. Yeah, but but yes, he does technically tell the translators what kind of translation uh, he wants. So he is directing everything. They're translating things according to his guidelines, technically. So yeah, he all is in charge still. All but, right. The, the, so but it's one of those. It's one of those things. Uh, was where. Um, Richard, most of the problems in this localization are definitely the, the circumstances because if Richard had a team, this would have gone way better. I um, mean, because the, oh, the man, okay. the, the, the man, the man is literally doing this entire game on his own. I mean, so you have to cut the guy some slack. And you have to remember, okay, okay. around to the same fair, time, he was also translating Final Fantasy VIII as I was at, well. I was actually about to get to that. While we can blame a lot of problems with the script on the circumstances. Final Fantasy VIII does also show that he was not the best localizer back in the day yet either. He was <laughs> he was he was notably a greenhorn still. Again, I'm I not can gonna, also I I'm can also gonna, tell you from ex sorry, go on. I'm not gonna expect Final Fantasy VIII's localization was absolutely god awful, but there's a reason it's kind of infamous for being drastically different from the original intent in a lot of cases. But go on to you. I can also tell you from experience that Chrono Cross, which was developed around the same time as a translation that I'm not super fan of, um, it, take, it it was the period where, similar to Nine, Seven and Nine Ninja was starting to take some liberties, you know, some more liberties, but it was clearly more of a prototype than anything because sometimes it just a bit not really worth it. And you will actually see a, an actual remnant of that kind of prototype also in the next part, believe it or not. But Honestly, in the meantime... everything about Chrono Cross... Er, the more I look into Chrono Cross, the more a mess the whole thing seems Honestly, to be. Honestly, Jota, I, the plot will fascinate me for how bizarre it kind of is. Eh? Now, if it wasn't for my... Again, my major point against Chrono Cross still remains mostly just the gameplay. Um, I get it. The team did mention that they wanted to do something completely different from Trigger because uh, the development of Trigger crunched them on a very, uh, you know, critical level. And obviously they don't want to repeat that, um, so they wanted to do something different. But man, they could have come up with a better idea than literally, literally kind of destroying the convention, the typical convention of a JRPG. You know, and having you literally grind for very few stats until the next boss encounter, and then rinse repeat. And that's not even mentioning about how despair, despair. You know, the party members you can collect are. You know, it's okay. just a, it's just a mess. I still believe the game should be released in some kind of fashion, especially for Europe for preservation purposes at the very least. I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of a remake. I was the leaks suggested that it was probably going to be announced. You know, at the Game Awards in December of 2021, but surprising that didn't happen. Could be because the game actually doesn't exist and the leaks were just full of shit. Could be because of a pandemic, you know, that shifted things around. We will probably, for the time being, when we're recording this, we'll never know. I'm curious, was um, this a leak as big and, you know, genuine as the it giant was a combination. It was a combination of factors, Jova. One, the NVIDIA leak, which did prove um, correct in multiple of its occasions, like, say, Death Stranding is the actress cut, for example, uh, the Act Razor remake, for example, which, you know, no one could ever come up with that, uh, you know, ideally, uh, on this precise kind of level. And then there was the suggestion that um, a singer, an Irish singer, had posted a comment mentioning, <clears throat> sorry, mentioning about doing a song for a remake that PlayStation was going to announce, uh, you know, later that later during 2021, and she was involved with uh, um, Yasunori Matsuda, the same composer of this game. Uh, so people did speculate that the clues did point it out to Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross did also, in fact, also got a collaboration event with a mobile game not really associated with with Square Enix. So they were just having a collab out of nowhere because. You know, companies, mobile games these days, in order to survive, they have to pour themselves out, even when it doesn't make any sense. But sure. Um, but yeah, that actually didn't happen. But let me get to the point that I was mentioning before. Sorry. The main question I was actually going to ask was Was the leak as bulletproof as the infamous Capcom? Leak? Okay, no leak is bulletproof, Drova, but at least okay. this one. Okay, I ask if it's bulletproof like the Capcom leak. That one. Has pretty much been bulletproof with 
Oh, the well, we with... still have we still haven't seen Dragon's Dogma two drop up. Um, Give it some time, essentially. But again, my okay. When I say bulletproof, I mean that it's solid in that sense. Also, those weird projects associated with Mega Man, but alone. But the town outside doesn't look so polluted, though. Maybe because nobody's been living here. Rather mm -hmm. strict airlock and scanning equipment. Zeppelin so seems to be much more technological. It does not. It does not look operational, though. The inside is what preserves so well. The outside, probably too. It's funny too. You were about to say Bioshock, and I was gonna say it's funny if Richard somehow went so crazy that he time traveled to the future to play Bioshock. You have to remember that Bioshock itself is the spiritual successor of System Shock, meaning that it has sim very similar rules. And that was, if I recall correctly, released around the same time at the very least. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just found it funny that you almost said Bioshock because that would have been incredible to imagine that uh, in okay, his madness, system Richard shock. got about a clear voyance and saw Bioshock in the future. Yeah, System Shock 1 was 1994, System Shock 2 1999, so he could have actually played this one, the sequel around the same time, which both of the areas, as you don't need to know, features uh, um, this kind of isolated uh, compartment where humans used to live, but now they're like, uh, you know, ruled by a rogue AI that uh, tends to fuck things over. It's not the case here, no, this is more just an isolated place that people are scavenging from above. But he has kind of that kind of similar introduction as well. But let me get to what I mentioned before. Zeboim is the name in English of two or three places in the Bible. The most common, you know, is uh, uh, the one we associate with the one of the five cities of the plain of Sodom, generally coupled with Adma. Um, it had a king of its own and was therefore a place of some importance, but it was destroyed along with the other cities of a plane according to Deuteronomy 29-23. You know, the, the, the Sodom and Gomorrah trials, essentially. Mm -hmm. Which, as we'll see, this is a more fitting description of this as Zeboim city. The other two, just to mention, um, as one term that is translated into Valley of Behinas, a valley of rugged glen somewhere near the Gibea and Benjamin. It was probably the place not bearing the name Vadi Shahik, Aduba, Ravine of the Chief of the Aenas, North of Jericho. And finally, a place mentioned in the Book of uh, Nemea, inhabited by the Benjamites uh, after the Babylonian captivity. So, again, for intents and purposes, take the first description as the, the, the more associated one with this place, because this, this place, we collect that as kind of a meaning. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's uh, to go back to the previous point, though. Um, no, it is important to remember. Uh, that uh, it wasn't until Dragon Quest VIII to that uh, uh, that he got properly promoted as tour acquisition director at Square Enix. Because before that, he was uh, doing various roles in local acquisition, but never a full-blown local acquisition director, as in the guy really in charge of a full-blown team. With Dragon Quest VIII, that was his first major gig, and that's where he properly created his proper style of flooding the game of British accents. But that, Pedro, this... technically he was the localizing director in charge for this game. I mean, sure, he was the only person there. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, the original director fucking quit on the fucking project, so yeah, I guess why I have to do the localization the direction, the translation, and the fucking typing as well. Hold on. <laughs> Ellie, do you remember seeing this? Yeah. Yes. I wonder why. Hmm. And again, guys, oh, so a lot of who's being vague. A lot of being weird coincidences are just happening. Titan, mm. Ellie probably has amnesia. That's an excuse. You probably know more than she does. Yeah, you're just full of shit, Titan. Hey. <laughs> huh. And that's, and that's yeah. why. And, and yet, that's why we love him. Emergency level yes, five. Yes. Oh. Yes. Richard Mark Cody was at level five. He's isolated. It's the best security ever. Richard Mark Cody was at level five. It's interesting. Uh, but he uh, doesn't uh, have the, the hype in the old waves. You know, you know, Ellie, you have yet to thank me for saving you from that exploding machine. Just saying. You mean the one that she said to explode in the first place? Yes. Well, she was being possessed, as you might remember. Hypnotized. I uh, also remember totally that. different. Uh, I do remember how you were serious enough to let her know that you would, in fact, put a bullet in her brain if she ever betrayed them. 
Well, even though some... you also later said that you can't help hypnosis. But but yeah, excuse also... me for having the balls to do what needs to be done. <laughs> similar Just to make the, up the... your mind, sir. <laughs> similar to the sewers in Kislev, this also dungeon. This dungeon is one with an ambient in the background instead of actually a proper track. Um, Probably to represent the fact that Zeboy means literally just isolated and now he's crawling with these abominations. Okay, what the around. hell is this? A woman's head under a hood? With a... Actually, no, it's a, it's a shell. Kind of like the one of, uh, you know, of a slug. Really? Oh, right. So well, on the a... right look more like hammerhead sharks mixed with terror though. I was actually gonna say bat, but yeah, that works too. Again, the sprite work actually is very fluid on these. <laughs> so again, I ask, is this one of Genova's missing sisters or something? Because that is literally a woman's top torso there. Sure, let's go with that. Yeah, um, it's one of those games, like for example, t uh, like for example, Turk can also back me up on this because he played the entirety of Leighton Brothers. Like, uh, when you take a look at something like uh, like like this, you can tell it's an early localization of this, because if, if he was to make this localization today, he would have flooded the the script with a lot of uh, British accents and would use the, the script in a way that conveys the accent properly, right? As you tell knows from uh, the uh, maybe not the... necessarily British oh. accents, like because you know I've seen plenty of his localizations that don't resort to that, but I do agree that he would have done a lot of things better. Okay, you know what? Okay, to be fair, even if this were, like, you know, more experienced Richard Mark Honeywood, let's assume, okay, let's take newer Richard Mark Honeywood and place him in the same situation where he's all on his own room there. I would give him some leeway in that maybe he might have still have made a lot of errors considering the pressure of literally being the one person working on this entire story, because... This is by no means a small story or anything. No, like, I no. could see, I could see the script for this being at least as thick as uh, like. Yeah, okay, you know, I can tell you, Jova. It's not as as a humongous experience as the one that Exceed had to go through with uh, with the Trails of games. Ooh. Thankfully, it's not as that. And to yeah. be fair, in those cases, they were not just like one person. It still requires some time because, in case nobody knows, it's a bit of a meme in the community. The Trails of games, particularly the Trails in the Sky trilogy, tends to have a massive script, both for NPCs yes. and for your main character. There's a shit ton of dialogue. Let me put it to like the point this. where the game doesn't really have voice acting for this very reason. Let me put it like this. If we ever get to commentating on those games, you will not be bored with any NPC because everyone from the smallest NPC to the biggest boss has quite a story to tell. So, like, if you like character development and whatnot, the trails in the sky trilogy is definitely for you. However, with that comes an incredibly, incredibly massive script. Like, again, yes. ima imagine if for saying Pokemon, every character you talked to had at least a chapter's worth of dialogue behind them. That is essentially but, uh, trails in the sky. And yes, and yes, like, Seed actually busted their asses to actually make that work, and he's actually very good. And then, you know, Falcon unceremoniously booted them out in favor of Nice America. Thanks. You know, I, you know, I think it speaks volumes that the majority of Matt McMuscles' "What Happened" video about that game had more to do with the localization process than anything. They are okay. usually made to seal up something inside of them. Uh oh. Not to keep something out, but to keep something in. So maybe we what shouldn't be we here. Mean? I wonder what that something is. I do we want to know? We're about to find out. Uh, yeah. Again, it's the it's also the whole general atmosphere. The fact that sure you are still encountered with the monsters, but notice how again this place is very desolate. It's not even a case of oh this this equipment malfunctioning gives you a jump scare. Uh... Ooh. Oh, the trick with this monster job is that it's basically a zombie. Uh -oh. Every time you hit uh, hit it, it always heals. It's called phobia. But the trick is to use a healing spell or an item. Oh, so nice. let's. It's the mermaid from your replicant. But, um, <laughs> kind of. Uh, um, but, uh, no, that, that, that's the interesting thing, uh, Jova, because if you go back before Dragon Quest VIII, all Dragon Quest localizations, when there were some, because that was rare, uh, you were your typical 90s localizations, you know, where, you know, they were, they were, they were made in America, because those, at the time those games only came out in America, not in Europe. 
Um, but it was, but Dragon Quest VIII was the first time that Nani was, uh, when, did that game work as a local position director. And in fact, Maria Darling is actually in that cast, for the record. That was her level 5 debut, technically. Not latent, surprisingly. Um, and that was the game that literally flooded the game with British accents. And now, that's the standard for Brit for Dragon Quest local position. British accents, British accents, all around. <laughs> if I, if I agree, that retroactively seeped into the Nintendo DS versions of yes, uh, the original six yeah, titles. That, that is a good tale. It became the localization style of the series basically mm -hmm. like the, the west loved giant quest his localization so much that it became the standard basically mm -hmm. um the terms are still recalled also is that for the magics uh to that uh, the hero can use in smash ultimate um yeah. but uh, let me let me mention something okay again i haven't played any god it's almost seven years actually um uh, but uh i okay officially Richard Arnold is not something to be credited for Layton Brothers. So is it a case where it was just his influence, or he, was he not credited for it? That one. Here, let me check Moby Games. Usually when you check that kind of stuff, too, it's better to use Moby Games. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get it. Sure, 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 sure. Yep. You can still tell that they tried that they tried to do something similar because you know, for example, there's a chapter that has a South American characters and as such it has, this character has a lot of uh, you know small slangs and terms uh, like the way the way this character laughs uh, is the typical uh, onomatopoeic laughter that you hear when it comes for example to Brazilian you know inhabitants. Uh, so there mm -hmm. is that. Exactly. But, uh, God, I forgot what I was mentioning before. Oh, right. Um, was, I was gonna, uh, well, no, actually, no, I was gonna. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's because, uh, yeah, you can tell. And later on, when, you know, Queen One came out, and, and, and I started to see all the British accents. Oh, okay. So basically, this is gonna be a spiritual successor to his uh, Dragon Quest Eight localization. But And it is in a lot of ways. Like, because if you, when, you, when I get around to record Dragon Quest Eight, you'll see for yourself, yeah, it, it's like, it's just like an Inokuni localization, and for good reason. <laughs> So it's it, 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 so you can tell what Honeywood's trademark style of is the British the, flooding the game with British actors basically. Mm -hmm. All right, we're actually close to the to the end. This dungeon again is not really that long. It's a bit labyrinthine, like Cheetah and uh, um, Cheetah and Billy noticed, uh, but it's still very manageable. And the encounters again, if you grind it enough. Uh, they are not really the problem. This is basically the point of the game where it starts to tell you um, if you grant the, the game, the random, you know, monsters will be easy enough for you to handle, but you better grant them for experience because instead the boss fights will be the one that tests you, of you know, ultimately. Um, in, the, in the meantime, uh, to, uh, here we go. In the Moby Games, the late brothers, but you can say right here, uh, the game actually had two local session coordinators, Honeywood and Ryoko Takahashi. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, yes, uh, you remember this, despite all the problems, this was all, this game, as you know, Gears was also the one where, you know, Richard uh, started to actually impose the whole thing about localiz localizers having to talk uh, with the development team uh, and actually coordinate uh, for, That's you know. Did. That's what he did with uh, the Nino Kuni series. He had the long oh, talks oh, with. Um, oh, Ellie, oh, are you okay? <laughs> Um, Emergency level 5. The Emergency button in Cyrector was activated 3, 4, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 hours ago. Hmm. No, that, that, no, that makes sense, Tail, because that's exactly how the local is. Sorry. Is it danger down the contamination? We're entering the room. Please execute that manual scan and confirm safety. After confirming, please reset the emergency level at the nearest terminal. Execute manual scan, please. Sure. Please wait. But little did they know that by pressing the execute button, it activates it will execute confirm. them. No nano contamination. You can re-enter the room by resetting the emergency level at the nearest terminal. Which means a lot of backtrack, so I will not show it right now. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Pedro. I'll conclude the part afterward. Uh, sure. Um, no, what I was what I was saying was um, it, it it works on it, it really works on that regard. Like uh, because uh, when if you take a look at the localization case study for Nino Kuni, that's exactly what happened. The, the, the localization team had a long talks so with the developers, so that's something that Richard encourages in general and again like and those can confirm for me like the localization of Layton's Mr. Journey is also excellent so, mm. uh, so like uh, um, but, so basically tell you, if you, when you take a look at credits for video games I recommend Moby Games over anything it, it it's much more thorough in that regard okay totally instead next part uh, 
where we actually discover what's deep inside the the, the city of Zeboim, or at least this particular building, and reasoning because the place is massive, and what why Solaris is interested in this place as well. See ya. Yeah. See ya. See ya.